Okay, in this class, we discuss about databases. So, do you remember what did we discuss in the last class? About, DNA. about the DNA and RNA. What's the difference between DNA and RNA? Deoxy reverse and H and OH groups, right? At the two prime uh, side, and then the base side. So you can see the thymine and racil, right? Right. Then we discussed about the complementary strand. If you have a DNA sequence or RNA sequence, you can get the reverse complementarity, right? That, that will do that. And then uh, we discussed about transcription and translation. So to convert the DNA sequence to protein sequence, and also discussed about the software. Which module or which suit we discussed? Emboss, right? So Emboss software we discussed, and there are a lot of options available in Emboss, right? So we use RevSeq, right, to, uh, for this uh, complementarity as well as the uh, protein sequence. Then we discussed about reading frames. So how many reading frames? Six, Six right? Three forward and three reverse reading frames. And we discussed about few of the sequence-based parameters, specifically on the stiffness or the flexibility or the base tracking energy, right? So if you discuss about the major aspects of bioinformatics. So, the first class we discussed about five major aspects of bioinformatics, right. What are the five major aspects of bioinformatics? Databases and then get the hypothesis and development of tools or online servers and virtual screening of compounds and currently bioinformatics is used in the next generation sequence analysis, right. So, the first one is the databases. So, in this class, we will mainly discuss about the databases. So, what is a database? A yeah, structural collection of information in organized form, right. So, if you look into this literature, there are many databases available, right. For example, if you use the general search, right, which one do you use? Google, right. You go whatever information you want, immediately go to Google and type, and then you will get the information, right. So, likewise, in the case of the bioinformatics. Right. What is the major uh, field in bioinformatics? Biology, right. Biology will produce a lot of experimental data. So, we look into the biology, right. We can get the experimental data on various aspects, specifically in the macromolecular sequences and the structures, expression profiles, pathways, and so on. So, we have a wealth of data available in the literature. The experimental list, they create the data and they publish in the journals, right. So, these data are available in the literature, right. So, it is very important right are necessary to collect all the information and put it together right in a computer readable form right we earlier days we used to collect the data and keep by ourselves currently due to the advancements in the computing and the transferring files and all it is possible to share the data right to public so likewise if you see the data which are scattered here and there that means the published in different journals articles so it is a pain to collect all the data otherwise those who want to do the analysis, they have to collect the data. So, it is time consuming and everyone has to do that, right. So, if you have a database on the collection of data in one place, then it is easy to extract the data and use it for the for the analysis or the development of uh, any servers. So, here it is scattered in the literature. So, you put it in a order form, right and in few years ago, they put together in the form of book. So, they collect the data for example, the thermodynamic data fail collected more than 22,000 data and publish a book. So, if you have a book, then again we need to look into all the details and we have to make into the computable form, then that is there are a lot of errors, the possibility of errors. So, it is important to have the organized collection of this information and a computable form, because in this case we can uh, reduce the errors, right and easily you can use the information for the further applications, right. So, for example, if you want to develop a database, right, what are the major characteristics you like to do? Yeah, first, we have to uh, read it and check. Yeah, first, you have to uh, get, uh, fix about the contents, right. So, who will use the contents, right? How shall we get the contents, right? What are the who are the end users, right? First, you need to decide about the contents and the importance as well as applications, right? If you develop a database and nobody is using, right then what there is no use to develop such database and putting so much of pains right so if you develop a database and that is useful to many others right then it is very important so that will be a very helpful for many many researchers right fine so what is the contents then what is the other other aspects you wish to consider how to link the, how to search in yeah we need to think about the users perspectives 
right whether uh, the users like to get the data on which aspects right for example if you uh, type something in google if you want to get any information from google if you type so will you get the first attempt or you take many attempts most of the first attempts sometimes it will take time it will, will you have to search again and again right but what if if you search 10 times and even 10 times you don't get the data what will you do will you use it again we don't use it right so the thing is when we search the users perspectives we, the user should get the reliable data and the required data that is important and the second thing is the time right now the world is moving very fast right so even they don't wait for even 10 seconds right if you google in any of the information if you google take, takes 5 minutes right so will you use that to google again we don't use it right we expect the result in 1 second as soon as we put enter right then you should get the result this is what they need right so it, the time that is very important and what else we need to think about yeah how to get that display the data because as per your requirements then the second thing is you need to get the reliable information right now if you, you get lot of whatsapp messages right so most of some, more than 70 percent are not reliable right whatever people think they make and then they uh, send as viral but if you get the required information and reliable information then you can trust if you do not get the reliable information if you google it and if you get lot of random information then it is not useful right because you cannot trust so whatever the database you develop the data should be reliable right that should be user friendly and there should be reliable, reliable information then what else you need to think about it should be less redundant because if you have the same data if you repeat again and again then that will be boring to the users because they have to do lot of work right so that should be less redundant so you have to give the high integration and less redundant right then what are other other aspects you used to think about yeah it should be understandable right we have to give some information you are familiar with the, all this information but the users are not so in this case you have to make in such a way that the user should understand your data right that, that is very important then what else it should have some yeah some sort of applications and references as well as you should give an option to download the data right you otherwise if you guys display a lot of information it is it will be difficult the for the case of the literature it is fine but the case of the biological data so it should be downloadable because we have deal plenty of data so editing is again it is an issue so we can give it as to download the data then several users they use that uh, database fine so like this if you look to develop a database you have to think about various aspects on these aspects if you consider and develop a database then you will get lot of users right many people will use it and then there will be a, a famous one right okay so now i'll discuss some aspects some of the important aspects and what are different characteristics of database some of them we already discussed that right? some of them i just i'll uh, go through some points first one is the contents that we discussed earlier so contents is very important right there are several databases available in the literature so could you list some of the biological databases PDB protein data bank right if you, anybody wants to have the structures right immediately they have to go look on the PDB because that is a unique source you will get reliable information then what else NCBI like uh, the Uniprod for the sequence database thermodynamics we go to Protham right our lab also we developed several databases for the for example proximate the binding affinity of protein protein complexes right. So the in all the databases the contents are very reliable so the contents are mainly the experimental data right and give you the sufficient information to the users right this is what the users require right so contents is very important and the second one is the ontology because in all databases because they have to develop with several constraints so they use various keywords right they use various terms and conditions right so whatever the biological term they use right so in this case they have to give the details right for example you put secondary structure right you know secondary structure but we cannot, we, we cannot uh, assume that everybody will know the secondary structure. So, you have to explain at least in one line you have to write what is secondary structure, what are different secondary structures you consider in your database, right. Solvent accessibility, right. The biologists, some of them are familiar with the term, some of them are not familiar. In this case, you have to explain 
what is that and what are the various terms we consider to uh, define the solvent accessibility fine. So, for all the terms we used you have to give the definition right and the third one I put the logical structure right. So, what is the main aim of your database for example, if you take the proximate it is a binding affinity of protein protein complexes that is the major goal. If you talk about the PDB, PDB the main, main aspect is the 3D structures the coordinate XYZ coordinates. If you take the, the prothan, so the major aspect is thermodynamic data for the proteins from folding to unfolding as well as for the mutations that is a major one. Now, we have to supplement the data with the other information right. If you talk about the thermodynamic stability, stability changes with the experimental conditions. So, you have to provide the conditions what is the temperature, what is the pH and about the buffers, ions and all the concentration and so on. And again we can give more information regarding the structures of the protein and more detail about the proteins as well as the mutations and various structure based features right all these things we need to give right. In this case you have to frame a logical structure right okay the major thing is your data and how to supplement with other information right. So, in the fourth one is the format of the data because for each entry you give some information right. If you use various format then the users will be confused. So, you have to follow a uniform format right if you look into the uniprot right. So, if you see the first line is the name and you have the synonyms and all the, uh, the order is the same. If you go to the protein data bank so you give the compound and the protein name and the resolution. So, you see the particular order right. So, in this case you have to give your data in specific format right that is very important. I will show some of the de details right in the later slides. Then now you have the overall view of your data right what you want to put in and what the terms you use and how to design your database and what how to how to uh, format your data right. Now you have the data then put in the website then it should give some sort of uh, sources to retrieve the data. So, you can give some search options right this will be give flexibility to the users right because all the users they do not want the same data right. Some of the users they require some data some they require they think about the different types of data right. So, in this case you to give a route to select the data from your database and then you have to present the results right. If you present everything together there will be a chaos right you have to present in a way that is very legible and understandable to the users right that is the requirement of the users right this is fine. So, then you the data is there now. Now, the issue is your database it contains various other information right. In this case you have to provide the information why are you link the data. For example, your main aim is thermodynamics, but if you link with the structures or the sequences then you have to give the link of the structural data or the sequence data right you have to give all the information right. Okay, now, I will explain uh, with some uh, examples. Oh, this is a database called thermodynamic database for the proteins and mutants that we developed uh, few years ago right. So, first we give the contents. So, this is the one we uh, give the details about the contents. So, we give sequence structure information right if you go to the website you will get all the details and the thermodynamic data and the experimental conditions literature and so on right. And the second one I show the first one is the contents and the second what is second aspect terms and conditions ontology right the terms and conditions. So, if you see these are the various terms we use right. So, for all the terms we use we need to give the details right. For example, it is a PMD number. So, PMD number means okay we know what is PMD, but the users are not familiar with the PMD. So, you can this is protein, protein mutant database number because there is a database called the protein mutant database right. So, here we give the expansion the first one PDB wild. So, what is PDB wild? PD wild means protein data bank for the native protein because this uh, data database is for the mutants. So, here we give the mutation information. So, for, for this case you have to give the information what is the first one what the second one what is the number right. Here in this case lysine K is replaced to proline at residue number 60 right. So, we give all the uh, information in the ontology right then the users know. So, what is mutated to what otherwise this will be difficult to understand right. And what is number 3? We have the schema right. So, here I give the schema. So, this is the our central thing 
uh, theme is thermodynamic data. So, Pratham is here, right? This is the central theme, and here we give the data on the experimental conditions. So, I give thermodynamic methods and conditions and the latest information right, and the data. What are the data you put in the program? So, we put the delta G, right, free energy change, delta H, and delta uh, Tm, and the delta G H2, and so on. Right. This is a free energy change due to the thermal denaturation or the denaturation, denaturation melting temperature, and so on. Right. Fine. Now, we give the sequence information, structure information. So, I put the data here, we give the sequence information, right, PI on Swiss prod currently the merge to uniprot right right so here structure is pdb and the function say the mot motive mutation and so on now we give the other databases right for to link with this one like as the brenda database this is for the enzymes and the pubmo database right so now we give the interface so that uh, connect to the internet so we will get the data and we can uh, do uh, download the data and we will use it for the further applications right this is what we do Right. This is the one is the content, second ontology, that is a schema, and the fourth one specific format, right. So you give the format. So we use a specific format for the uh, uh, database. For example, start with the number that is our uh, Pratham number and the protein name and the source and the mutation. So they follow the same format for all the data. So currently we have more than 25,000 data. For all the 25,000 data, we have the unit unified format. First line means the line contains a number, tenth line means I have the data G. So, we have the same information, uh, same line. So, easy to search and uh, interpret the data, right. Then we provide options because users uh, have various flag, uh, options to obtain the data, right. So, here we give the uh, search options. So, users can obtain the data with various search conditions, right. In the future slides, I will explain the details. Right? Here we give a lot of conditions. So, user can use any of these conditions right with and or or right to obtain the data. So, when they get the data right they click the start button and they will get the results. Here I searched with the lysozyme right this so we get the data with the lysozyme right. So, we have various other conditions what are the data which fulfill these conditions we display the results. Then we give the link for example, here I link with the reference this is the article right. So, if you click here, so they will get the literature. So, why are you get the data and how they use the experimental conditions all the information you can get from this uh, PubMed database right. So, it is a complete database right which contains the information regarding the thermodynamic data supplemented with other information with proper search option, display option and download option right. And then other, other aspects we discussed earlier it should be very fast, should be available all the times right if you search any of the websites and which not available for three times then nobody will use right at least if your uh, server is down then you should give a caution that currently server is down it will be available soon right otherwise people think they are not maintaining the database right that is very important fine so now how to develop a database right so there are various ways to develop a database right so in 1970 so, you have card from IBM, he described about relation database, right. So, what is a relation database? What is a relation database? It is a, a database which gives a correspondence between different features in the database, right. So, this basic unit is called tables, right. So, what they do? They put different information in a table. So, these different records are called attributes, and these attributes are interlinked with each other. So, without rearranging this table, this information, you can fetch the data, you can extract the data on any aspect, right. Also, there are several operations you can use. You can use the intersection, union, and the difference, and so on to facilitate the processing of the very complex queries. I will tell you uh, one of the examples, okay. So, you see the uh, table 1, right. What are information available in table 1? Uh, amino acid, the amino acid, acid. name. 3 letter code, 1 letter code, letter code volume, volume, surface area, surface area and, and digital group, digital. Right, which groups, right? So, metal group or grounding group and so on. Now, the question is what are the 3 letter codes of amino acids which have digital carboxyl group? So, what to do? Go to digital group, right? The question is carboxyl group. So, what are the carboxyl group is here? So, here is the carboxyl. 
here is the carboxyl right. Now the question is what are three letter codes of amino acids then why do we have to look three letter codes second column right. So, this is aspartic acid and glutamic acid right that is fine. Now, the second question if you see it is a compound uh, question the same question what are the three letter codes of amino acids right with volume more than 125 angstrom cube right and they have a digital carboxyl group. So, what is the answer the volume should be 125. So, which is the answer this one right this is more than 125 fine. So, this is you, you get the information from table 1. Now, next question what are the three letter codes of amino acids which can serve as hydrogen donors? This information available in table 1? No, this information available in table 2? Donors, yes. Three letter codes? No, right. So, in this case, you have to use tables 1 and table 2, the both the tables you have to use, right. First, go to table 2, oh, this is maybe you can see for table 2. So, I guess hydrogen donors. So, what are the hydrogen donors? First, you take this, yes, right. So, and the amide, then go here with the amide, this amide is here, and the 3 letter codes is this one, right. So, here you need to join. So, can if you natural, natural join, you can do table 1 and table 2 if n elements in table 1 and n elements in table 2. So, we will get the product is n m elements right. So, here 20 amino acids and 12 distal groups. So, totally around 240 rows right. So, for example, alanine. So, this is the 3 letter code, this is the 1 letter code, this is the volume right you can see the group and this is from table 1 and this is from table 2 right. You merge these two and you will get the information right fine. Now, what will happen if you go through the complex queries? For example, the question is you have to get 3 litre code okay, that is fine with volume between 100 and 150. So, second question right and the third again that can serve as hydrogen donors and not hydrogen acceptors or they are surface areas greater than 120 right and the distal methyl groups it is very complicated. So, we cannot easily see the tables and then get the data right. So, here we use the structured query language that is called SQL right it is well standardized right the, the language we can get the any complex queries you can get the data from any relation database right. So, here it is the syntax first you take 3 letter code that right, is the code you need and the conditions from where the side chain volume between 100 and 150 okay this will fulfill these conditions right. Hydrogen donor yes, hydrogen acceptor no and then what is next, code, next condition? surface area more than 120 right distal group methyl right. Now, it is easy right you can use this index to fetch the data from this table right. So, you can go to any complex queries right you can write a syntax and you can uh, get from any relation database right fine. So, now we show some places you can get the data together. So, there are several databases available in the literature right for if you look into the nucleic acid database right issue. So, the nucleic acid research they publish one special issue every year the first issue of the nucleic acid research right in January first issue they publish nucleic uh, the databases right. So, if you look go to this uh, NAR website right, and then look at the listing of databases right. Currently, there are a lot of more than 500 database listed in the NAR database database list right. And if you go through this database, you will get lot of information, right. Also, they classify the data into various aspects, right. But these are the different categories, right. So, they classify the data based on the nucleic acid sequence databases and RNA sequence databases, protein sequence databases, and structure databases, thermodynamics, and genomics, and metabolic and signal pathways, and human gene and diseases. Right, protein databases as well as other molecular biology databases, plant database, immunal database and so on. So, they have different categories and if you are interested in protein structures you go to the structures and even if you get the protein structures right there are various sub classification 
right. What is the major database for protein structure? PDB is a major database, right? If you did PDB is a major, major database. Based on the data available in PDB, there are various sub classifications. So, can you tell some classification from PDB? PDBTM. What is PDBTM? Transformer proteins. Right? The database of transformer proteins. Also, you have CAT, right? And scope. This is for the structure classification of proteins. And astral. What is for astral? This is 100 set, right? You can get 100 set of uh, structures, right? Using astral. So, you have several databases. So, for each category, right? For each category is listed in this database listing. There are several sub classifications, right? You can search this listing and you can find the data what you want, right? If you go to the thermodynamics, again you have several classifications, plenty of sub classifications, and you go into the details and then see the database available. This will help in different ways. For example, if you are looking for any specific data, you can go through the database and check whether the data are available or not, and you come the data. Second aspect is if you want to develop a database, right? First, you have to check. This should be unique. This should be novel, right? And already, if your PDB is available, you cannot make another structured database, right? In this case, you need to think and check whether such database is available already in the literature or not. If it is available in the literature, how far your database will be unique from the existing ones? If not, then what are the applications? Who are the end users? Right. So, you have to think about all the details. Right. Even if it is available, then you can think who are the users, how many citations they got, right. whether still they are continuing or they stopped in between. So, all the information you have to collect and based on the available information, you have to develop a new one. Right. In this case, this is very important, you have to look in the details of uh, the data available in the literature. Right. Then this will also help you to design your research problem. Right. For any bioinformatics or computational biology problems, you need to have a sufficient number of data. Right. If the data are not available sufficiently, then your uh, 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 databases uh, are not sufficient. Right. If the data are not sufficient, then, then we develop a model may not be significant. Right. Whatever the hypothesis or the models you make, they are not significant. <coughs> so, you have to get the label number of data. So, you can check the literature and mainly the databases and see whether you can get label number of data. Right. For example, if you are working on the binding affinity of protein DNA complexes or protein carbohydrate complexes, right? For protein protein, we have sufficient number of data. We can do it. Protein nucleic acid compared to protein protein, you have less number of data. Carbohydrate even is very less, right? So check is available or not. If yes, find the data which where you can find. If not, make a new database and first see whether you can get sufficient number of data. Because once you make a database, as I discussed earlier. So, we should have the reliable information, sufficient number of data, should be many users. So, various other aspects we have to think before you develop a database. <laughs>